Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2. It's an oldie, but a goodie. This is episode number 60 of my Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yes, you've heard me right. I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2 today. By the way, in the description below this video, you'll find affiliate links for Topaz products and products I use and recommend. Whenever you use those links, I make a small commission, and this really helps support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And when you use those links, I thank you. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. I'm excited to be sharing a tutorial with you today on Topaz Studio 2. And please do me a favor, if you've used Topaz Studio 2 in the past and you enjoy it, leave a comment. Who knows, maybe Topaz will read these comments and say, you know what, we need to keep developing this program because people love it. That is my hope anyway. Today's image is a stock image. I downloaded it from Pexels, and I'll leave a link for this image in case you want to go ahead and try this one out for yourself. Now, just to give you a little backstory before we jump into Topaz Studio 2, I started out with a crop tool. I'm just typing C to get my crop tool because I just want to show you. Basically, what I did was I just pulled down to right around here and went ahead and clicked this check to accept the crop. This image was shot with a portrait aspect ratio, but I wanted a landscape aspect ratio, so I needed to make some changes. And that's where generative fill comes into play because I need a generative fill because now with generative fill, we can make alterations. So what I did was I used the crop tool and extended the canvas here to the right. And also I added some canvas down here to the bottom with the crop tool. Now this is not about gen fill today, but I'm telling you, I did use gen fill and I'll show you what I did. So here's the first thing I did with gen fill. I filled this area in right here. And I'm going to turn this layer on so you can see it. And you may say, well, that's a lower resolution because you filled in a bigger area here because, you know, Gen Fill works with that 1024 pixel dimension. But I didn't care here because I'm turning this image into a painting. So it's not an issue. It's not a problem. And then I have this little area here, which I selected with a marquee tool and did Gen Fill again. No, I didn't use a prompt here or here. I just let Jen Phil figure it out and fill those areas in, which it did a really nice job. But then I wasn't really happy with the sky. So I came up with a prompt called Sunset Sky Over Lake. And basically what I did, I used the marquee tool and selected this area right here. And then I put that prompt in Sunset Sky Over Lake and I ended up with this. And I thought, oh, that looks really nice. I really like that. This is going to turn into a nice painterly image using Topaz Studio 2. But then I thought, you know what, for interest, with the lasso to I lasso to selection right here. And typed in a prompt of rocks, and I ended up with some rocks like this. So I thought, well, that adds some interest. And then I had a little bit of cleanup I had to do, so I ended up adding a blank pixel there. And as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. But there were some areas up in this area that I needed to clean up. And the new removal tool in Photoshop just does such a fantastic job. And so I started here and ended up here with the help of Gen Fill in Photoshop. And now at this point, I can use the TK Gen Fill panel and click this button to flatten the image. Or if you don't have the TK Gen Fill panel, and I don't know why you don't. And if you don't, it's absolutely free. And I'll have links for it in the description below this video. If you don't have it, you can right click on any one of these layers and click flatten. But it's so easy with the Gen Fill panel, you just click this button right here. And now at this point, I would duplicate this layer, and that's a Commander Control J because I never like to work on my background layer. And now we're going to send this into Topaz Studio 2, which I like to refer to as my creative toolbox. And I'm just going to come up here to Filter and come down to Topaz Studio 2, click Topaz Studio 2 and launch it, and we'll get started. This is going to be really easy, by the way. I'll just use two filters here. I'll start out by coming up here and clicking on Add Filter, going down to my favorite, one of my favorites anyway, Impression, which can turn your image into a painterly looking image. And right away when I click Impression, it already looks pretty good. Now, if you look like right in this area here, see some of those white areas in there? That's the background showing through and also around the rocks down in the edge here. What I always like to do, if you don't want to see that, is come down to the bottom 
of this list here and click on texture and then keep scrolling down and you're going to see background type solid original and that white is coming from this background color is set to white you could come here and click this drop down and choose any color you want here but what i'm going to do is click original and that gets rid of all those little white areas that's a little trick so i always like to do that if I don't want the background to show through. Now, some paintings you do want the background to show through, and that's why they have that there. Now, here's a little tip to see the before and after. Just hover your cursor out over the image and left click with your mouse and hold down. There's the before and there's the after. But already it's looking like a really nice painting. And then you can also come up here to this layer impression and click on the eye and shut that off and then turn it back on. And then you have to click on impression again to see the different tools inside of this filter. But I find it so much easier just to hover over the canvas, left click, hold down. As long as you're holding your left click of your mouse, you'll see the before. And then when you release it, you'll see the after. Now I'm just using this stroke right here. Now we have all these different strokes that we can choose. And I usually try the different strokes out by clicking on them. Like this is typo one. Here's typo two. See how they change when I click them? So you can just go through these and find one that you really like. But I liked uh, type 01, so we're just going to use type 01. And then we have number of strokes. It defaults at medium. So let me click on low. It'll be more abstract. You see that when I click on low. So there's low number of strokes. Here's medium. And here is high. So it would be more detailed with high. But I liked medium. I thought medium looked about the best. And I'll continue to scroll down here. I didn't do a whole lot in here, by the way. And sometimes you don't have to. Just You just study the image and look at it. And if it's appealing to you, you could just quit right there and go right back into Photoshop. Just come up here and click Accept, and you're done. But I went ahead and did a few other little things here. Now, the other thing I did was I came down here to Stroke Rotation. And with stroke rotation, you can rotate the stroke. So let me drag this to the right. And you can see as I drag it, see how the strokes start to rotate. And you can get all kind of different looks and effects here by doing this. But what I ended up doing is I took mine to like a 0 0.10. Just added a little bit of rotation here just to give it a little bit more interest. Now here's one I like a lot. And this is paint opacity. It defaults at a 0.50. And a lot of times I will turn this up. If you want the paint to look a little heavier, you can drag this to the right and see how those strokes start to look heavier. In my case, I just wanted it at default. So you can just double click paint opacity and get it back. But I always recommend to play around with these different sliders just to see what kind of effects you get. Next, I went to stroke width. And this deals with how wide your strokes are. So if I drag this to the right, See if you can see those strokes getting wider. Can you see that? So it's a little more abstract. In my case, I went to the left of zero to like a minus 55 and made them less wide, minus 55. I'm getting a little bit more detail in here. You can also lengthen your strokes. Drag to the right of zero to lengthen the strokes. See how they get really long or you can shorten them to the left of zero. But I just went ahead and kept mine at default at zero. So I'll just double click stroke length. But I just wanted to show you what that does. And again, let's take a look. Here is my before. I'm just holding the left click down on my mouse. There's before and there's after. That's all I'll do with the impression filter. But now I'll add another filter. So let's come up here to add filter. And here's one of my favorites, and that is Precision Contrast. There's so many good filters in here, by the way. To add this filter, just click on it, Precision Contrast. And this breaks contrast down into micro areas of contrast. Think more like sharpening, like little detailed areas of contrast, low areas of contrast, a little bit larger areas, medium, and then high areas of contrast. We'll start out with micro. Now, I'll really drag this to the right so you can see what it's doing. See how it's adding all kinds of detail, especially if I go the whole way to the right. Now, that's way too much. But all I did here was use like 0.38 right there. It just adds a little bit of extra detail. And this is a great filter to use with the impression filter. You can bring out some of your paint strokes with it. And then I went to low areas of contrast. And then I just added a little bit of low contrast here to like a 0.17 right there, and then just a little bit of medium contrast. 
and I'll drag this to the right. I'll take it further so you can see what it's doing, but see how it's making these rocks look real ugly down here, and we don't want that, but what I want to do is take this over just a little bit to like a point two zero right there and then high deals with the really high areas of contrast so let me drag this to the right and you can see what it's doing there you see that and it makes this uh, kayaker totally dark here so i don't want high so i can just double click it and by the way you can also take these sliders to the left and remove contrast i forgot to tell you that so if you want to take some contrast out of the image you can work with high medium low and micro again i'll just double click high and reset it but I like that right there. But check this out. You also have lighting here. You can work with shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then you have equalization. There's like low equalization. I'll just demonstrate this for you. Here's low. See if you can see a difference. Here's medium. And here is high. I like medium, so I'll go back to medium. But how do you know which one to use? Well, let your eye tell you. Whichever looks the best, that's the one. And then you have color. You have overall saturation, so you can add or subtract saturation you also get a vibrance adjustment and a color contrast adjustment but just inside of this one filter they give you a lot to work with and that's pretty powerful stuff let's see a before and after i'm going to left click and hold there's the before i'll release the left click here's the after i like it now if i want to see a before and after of the precision contrast i can shut this layer off by clicking this eye this is without precision contrast now let me click the eye again, and this is with precision contrast, and I really like it. And now I'm done here in Topaz Studio 2, so we can come up to the menu and click Accept. That'll send us back into Photoshop. And now here we are back in Photoshop. So let me shut off this layer, this Topaz Studio 2 layer. We started out here, and we end up here. Now remember, we also really started from this image right here. And now we turned it into this image with the help of generative fill in Photoshop and Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's Topaz Studio 2 tutorial. I like to call it my creative toolbox. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.